perfectionism is something that you've probably faced and it's something that I've had to deal with myself and in this video I'm going to share with you my experience with it as a video editor and just as an entrepreneur as a person in general and how I'm going about it because this is going to be a bit of an unscripted video because shit I'm struggling to get my words out I mean I'll just explain to you kind of why I'm making this video so I was recording another video it was about niches it might be on the channel already but it was about YouTube and um, what niche you should edit in and I've got the script ready I've been ready to record it for a while and now I'm at my desk the camera's on and I'm ready to record but suddenly I start finding that there's these changes I could make to the script you know I can make this oh I forgot to add that piece of information let me add that in I'm sure my boys would like that and then 20 minutes would pass, 30 minutes would pass, and oh, suddenly I'm hungry. I mean, I'm, let me go eat and I'll take a break and I'll come back. And now suddenly the camera's like fingers off and now the background needs to be changed. And I'm finding all these things that are coming up and two hours, three hours have passed now and I haven't recorded the video. A lot of it comes down to perfectionism and I've done work on this and it's basically me being scared to not look perfect on camera. When I have to come on camera and like talk and I feel a little uncomfortable, I'll be so real. Sometimes I don't feel the best on camera and I think it comes down to perfectionism and I had the same thing with video editing where I would get a video done or I'd be working on a project and it's not that I was procrastinating like oh I'm not starting because I'm trying to be perfect but I would be getting the video done, I'd give it in, the client's happy, everyone around me is telling me my work is good, even I at the time was saying that it was good. But an hour later, I'd be looking at my work like, nope, this is shit. Like, it's not perfect. Look, I messed up that one one thing. Oh, I tried so hard, but that still that animation still looks fucked. It's like, I would say all these things to myself. And recently, I've been doing a lot more introspective work and kind of trying to figure out why I have certain traits. And this is going to sound really strange, but I think a lot of the reason you have perfectionism, or I can speak for myself, but a lot of it comes down to like childhood trauma. This is going to sound weird as fuck for a YouTube video that's about video editing and no other like YouTube creator video oh, how to top, use top 5 AI tools like no one else is going to say this shit but I was watching this video by Charlie Morgan so I've paid him for mentorships I've joined his courses and also he does like YouTube videos which are amazing and there was this one video that was called how to unfuck your life and that's a weird that's a weird video to watch right but it's like two hours long and he's going through it and he talks about how everyone goes through like these up and down cycles of life where I'm sure you felt this where if it was like one week you're doing amazing you're watching amazing like educational videos your editing career is going well you're making progress you're doing your deep work sessions you're productive and two three weeks later it's almost as though you destroy it all just a week ago you were doing amazing but now you're wasting time your edits look horrible it's like your diet's gone like all fucked so when you eat you get bloated and when you're trying to work you can't work productively it's like you're basically destroying everything you've built up. And towards the end of the video, around an hour, an hour and a half in, he talks about why there's a part of you that builds and then there's a part of you that destroys. The reason you'll build, your logical brain will get you to watch videos like these, you, he will learn, he'll start improving himself, he'll do all these amazing things. And then you start to form a new identity. Your identity is pretty much how you see yourself, it's every single belief that you have about yourself. So when you tell yourself that I am an editor, that in a weird way, like you being an editor isn't actually like objectively true or false. Because it's not like you came out of the room, like you were born out of your mother and you were a video editor. So you calling yourself a video editor is you having an identity. And we have like thousands and thousands, probably like tens of thousands of little pieces of our identity that make up our ego, our self-identity, which is, okay, I am productive, I am um, I am someone who works hard, I am someone who is social, I'm an introvert, I'm an extrovert, like, it can be in both positive or negative terms, so you can have all these positive terms, or it could be like, I am someone that eats bad, I am someone that doesn't work out, I'm someone that's unfit, it's like, either positive or negative, you will have a self-identity, and you might think right now you have a positive self-identity, but whatever position you are in life right now is essentially a doing of your identity and whenever you try and improve yourself whenever you try get better at editing when you try to make more money the version of you that makes more money will not be the same version of you so you quite literally change parts of your identity in order for you to get better so think about when you're trying to become more productive what you're doing isn't you're doing productive things but instead you are 
getting the piece of your identity which is oh i am unproductive you're trying to get rid of that and then put in a new piece which is i am now productive and essentially the reason you destroy yourself after building yourself up for a couple of weeks maybe it's a month for two months is you started to go against your identity when you improve yourself this is going to get a bit weird but i don't i don't know if I, fuck it i need to share this shit man like my brain's kind of mentally blocking this because basically this video i wanted to talk about like trauma and kind of where perfectionism comes from and i normally don't struggle with articulating my words like this but it's almost like my brain's blocking me from speaking about this essentially you know we'll we'll ease, we'll ease into it as a kid i was basically like one of the values that i was raised on was this idea of perfectionism it was like okay if you're going to do something do it perfect I, i'll never forget like when i was in primary school so in the uk primary school i think is like from like 4 5 years old to like 12 i think or like 10 or something like that so it's like the earlier stage of school and my dad used to drop me off in the car right and my dad would give like a little pep talk i was going to say cuz i'm asian but it's genuine i think all cultures do this it's just like your dad is like saying like oh make sure you try hard in school like even though i'm a little kid like he's begging me up he's like oh make sure you try like have a good day at school and stuff and i never forget this one phrase he used to say every single day outside the school gates while we're in the car he says make sure you sit down and listen and make sure when you give answers make sure they're perfect and i'll never forget how he said it it was always like with just very specific like like emphasis it was like like perfect like perfect like he would literally repeat it again and again and I'm a little kid so it's like little kids we're impressionable we basically are sponges we absorb whatever we're given and imagine hearing every single day from basically the man you respect most the, your father figure and this person is telling you that perfectionism is a value that we hold you're going to live at least even like while you're a kid you're going to live with that value but as you grow older that's probably going to be a value that you live by maybe it's not that you you actively say oh I'm a perfectionist but it's just in your subconscious because of how you were raised and while that did serve me in school don't get me wrong like this isn't even like a weird ego thing but i was like the academically gifted kid as a kid like when i was like going through primary school or even high school like i was known as like the child prodigy and this isn't even like a weird flex or some shit but academically i was considered gifted and i think a large reason of that was because my dad like put this whole like view of perfectionism into me and like that sounds great right like i'm going through school flying through literally i'm working at like 2 3 4 grades higher than i should be and this sounds great but it was in one of my parents evenings so parents evenings i don't know if they have it outside of the uk parents evenings are where your parents come in into the school and then they get to talk to your teachers just to say like oh yep so if he's doing this here he's doing good here he's doing bad here this is how we can do it like this is his grade stuff like that so i go to a parents evening and i'm in year 11 so the last year of high school i'm 15 years old and my teachers are talking to my parents and i'm sitting there as well so she's talking about how like so if he's a gifted kid like well done like he's doing well and the only thing is he just needs to study a bit more I look at her she told she looks at me and says it and I look at her and I'm saying but but my grades are good it's like I'm not exactly failing am I I'm getting like A's pretty much and she was like yes but your GCSEs are coming up and you are going to need to to work because your natural talent will only get you so far and I never understood the importance of what she said because I kind of brushed her under the rug I'm thinking like no I'm a smart guy like I can basically read a textbook and absorb it like that's what I thought I could do but It was around first year college second year college so a year or two later after that parents evening that the subjects are getting a little harder so the jump between high school and a level is like high school and college in the UK is quite a big jump and what she said came true it was like my natural talent it was no longer enough for me to continue like doing super well it's not that i was failing i was just getting like b's and c's which for me felt like failure And looking back at it the reason it felt like failure was I was raised on perfectionism like I was someone who was had the identity of someone who would get everything done perfect I would be I had that like a piece of my identity was I am a top student I would be number 1 in the class even if I was number 2 I shit you not being number 2 
felt like failure to me. And in a weird way, it wasn't that when I went into college and started getting worse grades, not even bad grades, but like I would get like top, I would get like fourth or fifth in the class. I hope this doesn't sound like being mad egotistical but because this shit fucked my life, bro. I don't care anymore. If you think I'm egotistical, I don't care. I would get like fourth, fifth. And instead of, you would think that it would motivate me to go back up, right? But what ended up happening was I would basically like self-destruct. I would like, like I would start missing classes. I would start misbehaving. I would start like not saying that I don't care about class anymore. And it basically would undo everything that I've done for like over over my last like 10 years of my life. So I realized that me being a perfectionist was very much like an all or nothing thing. It was like, I was raised with perfectionism and I was told like, okay, if you're not gonna, my dad literally said this, I'll never forget. It was like, if you're not gonna do it perfect, don't do it at all. And you can see that happening in my education. It's like, I was perfect, perfect, perfect. Found out I wasn't perfect. Okay, don't do it at all. And in a weird way, this is gonna be applicable to you. And this is how I went about my editing career. This was me in editing as well. So around the same time, around 16, maybe a year later, 17, I'm editing videos and I'm starting to work with like some respectable guys, couple hundred thousand subscribers, nothing huge, but it's these YouTube channels who are doing okay and they've hired me and now I'm working on their videos. I'll do the videos, I send it in and I've got this constant feeling that I'm not doing enough. It's like, I didn't even need the money at the time, bro, I'm a kid. So it's like me making like a grand a month was more than enough, but I felt like I wasn't doing enough, not only in the monetary sense, but like monetary sense, but it was like the actual skill as well. Everyone around me, I've got people on Twitter telling me that my work is good. I've got my clients saying my work is good. Even like my family would sometimes see my work and be like, wow, like you've gained that skill. And even then, every single time I started an edit, I would basically procrastinate because I didn't want it to, because I didn't want to like mess it up. And it comes back to, to how I was raised as a kid. It was me being told that I'll be perfect or don't do it at all. And it's going to get a bit dark, but It's like, I think you'll relate to this if you were from an Asian household where it's like, grades are basically like your parents, like, like, it's your parents meet for how much they love you that day, where it's like, okay, you get good grades, you are loved. And then <laughs> if you don't get good grades, it's like, you're basically going to get disowned, bro. Um, so, I have like, genuine trauma from getting bad grades and like my dad beating me. And <sighs> fuck. And it's like Fuck me. And it's like this isn't even asking for pity or shit, but fuck, my voice is quivering. And it's like this isn't even me like asking for pity or anything, but it's genuinely like that was a part of my past and it's like that's cool and I'm not saying this like I'm special I know it's like there are many people that have like a worse life than me trust me I understand it's like I think that even the fact that like my dad beat the shit out of me because I would get bad grades it's like I'd come from school and it's like my dad just like wouldn't talk to me for a while because I got like a shit grade and that meant that I did well in school like I did well in school don't get me wrong I was a top student but it created this fear of like abandonment and it's like I didn't understand it at the time of course I didn't notice at the time like this is after me journaling this is after me doing introspective work but a part of my brain had like rewired to tell myself if we are not perfect then then we are not loved if that makes sense and I think that like 
that changed like my subconscious actions while I was editing, while I was working to where to where if if I if I do something which is which is not perfect and I continue to do it that would essentially have negative effects. That would be me getting punished and things like that and and the reason I'm sharing this is because if you have perfectionism right now in a weird way and I know this is going to sound really strange but you might not have the exact same story as me where like your dad fucking beat a shit out of you or something and it's like my relationship with my dad right now is good like this isn't like me saying my dad is a bad person I love my dad now like we've talked about this together and it's like yeah like we both agree like you probably shouldn't have done that but I even tell him like I'm glad you did it because now I'm having those realizations and I don't think I would be the person I am today I'm happy with the person I am today. I love the business I've built. I love the character I have. I love like how confident I am. And it's like, okay, we're going to talk about confidence later as well. But essentially, I wouldn't be the person I am now if that didn't happen to me. So I don't regret any of my past. But you might not have something exactly the same as me, but there's probably a deeper reason. If you're a perfectionist and you feel overwhelmed when you're working, you you probably have have some reason for that in your childhood. And your brain right now is going to cover it up. The analogy that Charlie Morgan used in that video where he talked about this concept is imagine you're in like a swimming pool, you're in like an ocean, right? You're like vast ocean as far as the eye can see and someone throws a beach ball to you. So you've got a beach ball and now you hold that beach ball underwater. That This beach ball is essentially trauma. This is um, This is like a traumatic event. You've got this beach ball and you have to hold it underwater because if it comes over water, then that's almost like trauma coming up. You're going to feel that, like, it's going to feel shit. So you push it down. And then the person throws you another beach ball. So you put the one that's already underwater, you put that between your legs, you make sure you hold that down. Then you grab the other one and you push that push that down. Um, and then another beach ball comes, so you grab that and you push that down. And now you're pushing that, like, with one foot in between your feet. So you've got two between your legs and one in your left hand. And then another beach ball comes and another comes and another comes. And then there comes a point where you can't hold them anymore. One slips out of, like, between your legs. And then now all of them suddenly, like, burst up. Your brain, the whole reason your brain can like basically survive even past like traumatic events is a lot of them where your brain will not let you uncover them. So you right now might think that your perfectionism, oh, it's not that I'm, it's not that I have like fucking childhood trauma. It's like, it's the fact that I just really like things being good. It's like, bro, if you are a perfectionist, if you struggle with it, I promise you there is stuff that you have not uncovered. You have a lot more trauma than you think. And this is a weird thing to say, but we're all fucking traumatized, bro. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> and I kind of got over this with editing. I think that with editing, it was very much like, okay, as you actually do get better, so you keep improving yourself. So with smooth editing, you're actually like actively practicing to get better at editing. And you have undeniable proof that you are getting better. So, like, right now, I'm working with guys with, like, 20, 30 million. I've worked with, like, the biggest YouTubers on the planet. It's like, I have undeniable evidence that my editing is good. So that kind of puts my mind at ease now. But at the time, it was fucked. So I think that one way to kind of beat perfectionism is have undeniable evidence that you are perfect. So it's like... It's kind of giving into your trauma if we if we think about it. It's like you just saying, okay, so we are going to be perfect or nothing. It's like you actually become perfect, and that's not me saying I'm perfect as a video editor. It's like when it comes to like my accomplishments in terms of who I've worked with, I feel like I've reached my peak. It's like I've worked with the largest guys. I've made like multiple ten k months. It's like I've done as much as I wanted, and my next stage was like I want to teach what I've learned. And it was today, just like literally a few hours ago, where I was about to record and I'm procrastinating, like I said at the beginning of this video, and I'm realizing I did not deal with this this shit. Like the reason I took so long to record was first of all, my parents like built up that value of perfectionism. So it was like be perfect on camera or nothing, but I think a lot of it came down to like self-image in terms of like 
genuinely how I look. So if, if you only wanted to learn about video editing and stuff, then it's like, why you're perfect, you're perfectionist in video editing, that's basically it. But this is going to be more like on camera and stuff. If you ever like, I guess it'll still apply if you're talking about like, oh, me showing your, you showing your face on online or you showing your face in a client interview or showing your face on Discord calls and stuff like that. The reason I took so long to show my face online, like how you're seeing it now is, it sounds weird, but like I had like a genuine perception of myself that I was like an objectively ugly guy. Like it sounds strange, but the the mental image of myself when I'm not looking in a mirror is the same image of myself that was at like 13, 14 years old. And essentially, I haven't shared this online before, but like, I, when I was like a kid, I had like really bad eczema. Like eczema is basically like rashes and like skin, like a skin condition, right? And it, like that fucks your confidence. Like imagine waking up and you went to sleep, you, you were fine. You woke up and you go to the bathroom ready to go to school. You're brushing your teeth, you're brushing your teeth. And then you look up and you look at the mirror and your face is like covered in fucking cuts. And it's like red, it's like, it dries, like flake. And it's like, it's not that anyone else did this to you. It's not that like, even like your biology did this to you. It was genuinely, you, you did that to yourself overnight. And it's like, I would scratch my skin and it's like, like I would be allergic to so much shit. Basically, I couldn't eat like half the foods, bro. Like I was allergic to fucking chocolate and like cow milk, bro. Like, like there was just so much like, I like really fucked up health when I was younger and because of how I looked I hate I hated it like I genuinely hated it and this is gonna sound strange as fuck I'm gonna sound like a crazy narcissist when I say this but I hope you watching this understand like if there's anyone watching this this is such an unscripted video if you're still watching this comment bro because I don't know what the fuck I don't know if anyone's watching this shit there's gonna be like one guy that's watching this but I love you, bro. Um, it's going to sound narcissistic as shit, but sometimes when I look in the mirror, it's like... I... I don't... I forget that I look like that. Like, I forget that I'm not like... This is going to sound... Oh, this is so cringe to say, but it's like... It's, I forget I'm not an ugly guy. Like, like, I'm, like I'm, I'm not an ugly guy. Like... And I hope this doesn't sound weird, but it's like, it's because I was raised, like, not raised, I was, as a kid, I was like, I had fucked up skin, I, I'll, I, I'll probably, I'll probably show pictures, I'll give it pictures to my editor, but like, I had like really fucked up skin, and it's like, it's not people bullying me, I don't think I was ever bullied per se, but it was like these sly comments of like, people just saying like, oh, why is your skin like that? Or like, oh, did you do that? Did you scratch your face again? Or like, it would be thing the fucked up thing is it would be people who who don't know they're saying something negative that hurt the most it'd be like my parents saying like oh you need to stop doing that all the time look what you're doing to yourself like like there were days where i remember i was in primary school so imagine i'm like fucking ten, like 10 years old right and i would wake up i'd have this whole moment of like realize i scratched my face over the night my face is like bleeding and shit and my dad would literally say, like, I'm not letting you go to school like that. Like, I refuse for people to see you like that. And imagine hearing as a fucking 10-year-old, bro. So it's like that self-image of myself sometimes... So it's like that self-image of myself. Sometimes I still have it when I'm coming on camera. It's like a lot of people say that I'm confident. And I would say that I've built up my confidence over the last few years. If you saw me like a few years ago, even like from a few years ago, my confidence was nothing compared to it is now. But it's like, like we talked about that thing of like, oh, you build up and you break back down. It's like me now has built up confidence. Like I build up confidence. And then I sometimes have like small moments. Like I said, what I was trying to record where it's like, my old identity would break me back down to where it believes I should be. And the reason I believed 
my subconscious believes that I should be there is because of these like past childhood events. So we'll kind of and the reason I, I fuck. And I've been looking into like solutions and stuff for this. So, how do you like deal with this trauma? Because I think most people have trauma. It's just that nobody deals with it. So it's like I would, me saying this isn't me saying I'm special. I think everyone has like deep rooted shit like this. Like you included. Like bro, don't think it's don't think you're different, bro. Like you have it as well. But it's just that most people don't deal with it. So it's like I'd rather deal with it and talk about it and like actually accept that. Like yeah, I'm kind of fucked up. It's like we all are, but at least I'm accepting that. And um. I'm looking into solutions and stuff for this. I haven't read any books on it, but I'm kind of watching videos. I'm speaking to people about it. Um, and from what I've found, there's this one concept called like shadow work. And it's this idea that you right now have in some way or form outgrown your child, your child version of yourself. So it's like you would objectively say you watching this, you're watching a video about like perfectionism and child trauma. If you follow my other videos, it's like, you watch videos about how to make money as a video. So this isn't like normal stuff that people watch. You as a kid, if you realize that, oh my, like he's watching videos, like educational videos, not some random entertainment like most people his age. It's like your younger version of you has probably grown and become better now. So this is you now. You're a lot better. Well done, bro. The way you kind of deal with this trauma is by, by integrating bro, integrating both and realizing that you have gone through that transformation from bad to good. Of course, there's more to grow, but at least being able to acknowledge that you've made that progress because right now your brain almost still identifies with the child version of you. And there's a quote by Sigmund Freud, I believe. I, I think it's by him, but nonetheless, the quote is, the adult is developed to de now the adult is developed to protect the child and at first sound like this sounds like okay so you grow up and you protect children right but what it really means is the adult version of you so as you've grown up you've basically built all the coping mechanisms and everything you you do every, all the identities you have every, every one of your thoughts is made to make sure the child version of you is continued to to be safe and not attacked pretty much it's like you've built up perfectionism because the child version of you was somehow in some way punished and it might not be like some huge event it might not be like your dad beating you or some shit but it might just be like you gave an answer in a math class one time and it was wrong and then this one person laughed at you and it's like that one little tiny thing might have made it so that when you're 20 years old suddenly you've got some deep rooted trauma where you have an edit in front of you and you're scared to make it perfect because your subconscious is protecting the child version of you that one person just laughed at him when he wasn't perfect and i'll be honest i don't have all the answers for this this is something i'm still going through as well it's like bro you saw me fucking break down and shit it's like this is something i'm going through as well i'm gonna read like books on it and stuff um i think it's called i think it's carl young let me search it up for you boys carl yeah carl carl young Jung or Jung, Young, however you say it, he's got books on like this sort of shadow work, trauma, and all of that. And those are books I'm probably gonna order straight off this video and read now that I'm thinking about it. But yeah, essentially, at least understanding why you're a perfectionist, I found has helped me so much more with telling myself like, okay, bro, like those old conditions that you used to go through i know you've been through shit when you weren't perfect but you are okay now like nothing is going to happen if you're not perfect on camera it's like even if you don't look good on camera who cares it's like you can't change that so who gives a fuck it's not like someone's going to laugh at you like okay one person might laugh but it's like there's people that cares like my boys my boys watch me it's like so clearly it's fine even if i was ugly like with with like the even like the perfectionism with editing it's okay even if the edit isn't perfect it's it's like you're still safe like you can look at yourself in the mirror and be like okay is anything going to happen to you is it that you will be abandoned is it that you will get like love revoked from you probably not if you mess up an edit and it just 
just allowing yourself to know that kind of helps with perfectionism and yeah bro yeah this is just a video that i kind of wanted to make because it's been playing out my mind a lot recently no it, yeah it's been playing out my mind a lot recently and today was the day when i was trying to record but it came back up and i was like okay i need to record this video first because unless i record this video i will feel like there's something that i need to talk about that i haven't so i mean if you did like it you can oh, it feels so wrong to do like by the way go like this like subscribe go down in the description it's like all that shit like bro it, it feels so wrong for a video like this but um yeah i mean if you did watch the end you can comment or something but yeah i ho hope you found some sort of value in this bro but i love you Mwah. take care